Good day, this is Brad Caleb, PhD, and my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. Yes, folks, I continue to work on the proper foundation of the, for the prodigal son and daughter. The key to happiness is the key to happiness perspective. If that is true, why don't we go back to see some Christian oxymorons exposed in Restorative Justice PMS versus PMS 26. So today the question is, is the key to happiness perspective? Perspective means that we can reflect on what we have learned from the past. Now, what did we not learn? Why did we not learn the lesson from 400 years ago? 400 years ago, 102 pilgrims were staring down what promised to be a brutal winter after coming to shore and setting up a tiny village in Plymouth, Massachusetts. Industrious, God-fearing pilgrims pulled together their resources and efforts to better survive winter. They created a commune and elected a governor to call the shots. Unfortunately, in the spring of 1621, half of the pilgrims died from starvation, disease and exposure. One clarification found that, that collectively living, they uh, had a misunderstanding and the gloominess and retard much employment that would have been to their benefit and comfort. Young single men found that they had to work so hard and get no reward for it. And the wives, they deemed that the kind of slavery to be forced to work and do chores for men besides their husbands. Reversing the course, they tried something new. Every man for himself. Now that sounds cruel and it is harsh, but or even counterproductive. But Bradford explained. It made all very dynamic and with apparent success, resulting in more corn planted than otherwise would have been by any other means. The governor or any of us could have done, since women were now went willingly into the field, taking their little ones with them to set corn before they would allege weakness and inability. And now they have worked so hard and have been taught great tyranny and oppression. Now, so what they would have called tyranny and oppression was today a success because they worked for themselves. What did we do 400 years later with the lessons they learned? We're thinking about the lessons learned from history back about the many great books written by those inside the current time in history. Why we are responding to jokes, movies or viral videos today instead of paying attention to history that keeps repeating itself over and over since we failed to learn. I recently read a rabbi's perspective about Trump, the Pope and the Bible from an American thinker and that was dated in 19 February 2016, just about when Trump started. His name was Rabbi Ari Spiro. In response to Donald Trump's call for constructing a wall at our southern border to stem the illegal immigration into our country, Pope Francis indicated that Mr. Trump was not a Christian. As the Pope says, Christians build bridges, not walls. So, as a rabbi, it is not for me to decide what is Christian. This was the response or the comment from this rabbi. However, I can speak to what the Bible says about such matters. Throughout the Bible, the Old Testament, God impels us to do those things for self-defense. Those required to ensure safety from disease and protect the nation's border so as not to suffer economic and health risk or violence. In Deuteronomy 22 verse 26, they told us that if one sees a young lady being attacked, the good citizens should defend her in all ways to protect her innocence, her dignity and her well-being. Since we can do that on behalf of others, we can do that on behalf of ourselves. Exodus 22 verse 1 mentioned self-defense. Now this comes also from the rabbi. Self-defense is not something merely permissible, but obligatory, a sacred duty. 
The purpose of building a wall is not to be mean-spirited, but to protect innocent American citizens from assaults happening, from diseases entering the country, and from the reported jihadists coming over the border in stealth to kill us. Before multiculturalism becomes the single most important virtue as designated today by society's ruling class, purity stood above all else the duty of fathers and mothers to protect their children, brothers from protecting their sisters, and a country's leader to protect the citizens will rely on their leaders for such protection. This according to what our friend the rabbi said. So, with regard to the scriptures, I went back and checked the scriptures. Unfortunately for the rabbi, today, November 25th, 2020, although Trump did not concede to President Biden's elect, people got fed up with a second term for Mr. Trump. Checking his Bible references, he referred to, so I did personally check Deuteronomy 22, verse 1 and 2, the complete Jewish Bible. You are not to watch your brother's ox or sheep staying or straying away and behave as if you hadn't seen it. You must bring him back to your brother. If your brother is not close by, or you don't know who the owner is, you are to bring it home to your house, and it will remain with you until your brother asks for it. Then you are to give it back to him. So then with regards to the young lady, with the regards to the young lady, she got married to the fellow that accused her that she was not a virgin. And the steps the family took to prove her innocence cost the accuser money. And the verdict was that he could not divorce, divorce her. Checking out the statements of the Pope, I reason, the Pope knows that he, as the leader, represents a group of people misled since 325 AD. Believing this fellow, uh, believing they follow the way of Jesua, or, as most people know him, Jesus. The church follows believers flock through Nicaea's agreement into a false and misleading concept. Folks, this is heavy. So I checked the rabbi. He was not correct. I checked the pope. The way of Jesua, a.k.a. Jesus. The church forced believers, the believers flock through Nicaea's agreement into a false and misleading concept. My question to the rabbi and the Pope would be why they did not consider this. History is clear about repetition. Since history repeats itself time after time, Mr. Trump as a second generation immigrant should be compassionate, remembering his father's plight. The letter fled to, Amer uh, to America in need of the same principles. He denies the current would-be immigrants. Checking Mr. Trump's cover story, the background, what brought back to life is scary. Led by John Hakey and Paula White, Trump's insiders had strong backing from within the USAF nuclear command in Minot Air Force Base. Meanwhile, under Trump, Trump treason returned to the United States Air Force and the oversight capabilities of chairman of the GCOS, Mr. Dempsey, was disabled a biographer and professor of political science at the USA University. Trump's plan? Trump will turn over the football to the Pentagon. Folks, this is just, just now happening, okay? In trade for the backing in a coup. Trump has told both congressional leaders in the GOP and his Scottish Stooges that he will burn the United States to the ground unless they can find a way of cancelling the elections. All the things Israel warns America about every day, radical groups in Iran and Pakistan are getting control of nukes that happened, but not with Muslim radicals and not in the Middle East. It happened here at home. And when I say here at home, referring to the United States of America, the radicals, they were Christians of a sort, at least possibly intent on Armageddon, maybe planning to sell the weapons to Iraq, Iran or North Korea, or more likely, tucking them away for a rainy day. For completing the tale, I would refer to VT Veterans Today, and it's dated the 14th of November, 2020.
Discovering the truth is not an event that happens in a moment. It is a gradual process that takes time and careful consideration. You might not at once accept the truth, but after careful prayer and guidance by the Holy Spirit, you slowly but surely will see the realities of this life hidden in plain sight all along. Satan as a powerful force in his world, his lies and deceptions must be exposed as to what they are. Some people do not acknowledge Satan's threat in their life. And even the people who do often underestimate just how active Satan is in our world today. If you are not on guard against Satan's lies and deceptions, then consider yourself deceived already. Our only defense against Satan is the inspired words in the Bible, along with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Actively seeking the direction of the Holy Spirit is the number one thing you can do to know the truth. God will, God's will for your life and the ability to live it out. As quoted by society, ignorance is bliss, but lack of knowledge is also the downfall of each person since the truth will set you free, my friend. God bless you in your pursuit of truth. Are you ready to go and check out what the Pope to share with you? When he stated that Mr. Trump was not a good Christian, he forgot to mention something else, the fourth imperial degree of 325 AD. Can we learn lessons from the past between the Roman Empire with Constantine and Pope Sylvester I? The fourth imperial degree. The donation of Constantine is a counterfeited Roman imperial degree by which the fourth century emperor Constantine the Great transferred authority over Rome and the western part of the Roman Empire to the Pope. Agreement concurred with the acceptance of Constantine became known as the Constantine the Great, a Roman Emperor at the beginning of the 4th century. He won several important battles to reunite the Roman Empire under one emperor after decades of internal conflicts. The Constantine is most famous for laying the foundation for Christianity to become the dominant religion in Europe. Most of you maybe think that I am wrong. You thought that it was Jesus Christ that created Christianity. But what I'm stating here is Constantine is most famous for laying the foundation for Christianity. So if not Jesus Christ laid the foundation, why in the world are you guys Christians that is based on what a emperor of Rome did? So let's figure it out. What happened? In 325 AD, Constantine assembled the Council of Nicaea to unify the doctrines, aka dogmas of this new state religion of pagan Christianity. Do I have to repeat this? Dogmas of this state religion of pagan Christianity. Many issues settled in this council, such as Trinity doctrines, the calendar, the Sabbath day, the Christmas, Easter and the renouncing of so-called Judaizers or as heretics. Before 325 and the decision at the Council of Nicaea, the church used to teach what Jesus taught about himself. Jesus was a man indwelled by the Father. We can check this out in John 14 verse 10 and 11. Jesus got transformed into the Son of God at his baptism, as the Gospels of Matthew and Luke originally read. Jesus' divinity derives from the full presence of God the Father, which in Hebrew translates as divinity. Jesus repeatedly said, the Father dwells within him. John 13, uh, 14, 10 and 11. John 14, verse 10 to 11. The word Logos was God and became flesh. It meant the word Logos dwelling in Jesus became flesh when the word came upon Jesus and begot him as the Son of God. This is according to John 1 verse 14. Jesus said precisely, the Logos is not mine, but the Father who sent me. So the words that Jesus spoke were not his, but the words from God, the Father. He said that in John 14 verse 24. Nor was Jesus ever said to be the eternal Son of God. 
The fourth century eternal Son of God doctrine ran afoul of the original baptismal accounts. The gospel repeatedly quoted by the early patriarch writers of the church, and I'm talking about 100 to 320 AD, when God told Jesus in a voice from heaven that this day I have begotten thee from the Messiah. No wonder. These words, this day I have begotten thee, which Yahshua, no wonder these words, this day I have begotten thee, which Yahweh quoted from the Messiah, Psalm 2. They removed from the baptismal accounts after the Nicaea Council. But when an emperor named Constantine legally pontifex maximus over all regions of the empire saw Jesus sell his favorite pagan deity of Sol Invictus, Constantine seized the opportunity of setting up a church council to change the original beliefs of the church about Jesus. Constantine as Pontus Maximus began in 324 AD to set up the council, professing publicly for the first time to have had an appearance of Jesus over 12 years earlier, before the battle at the Milvian Bridge of 312 at AD. He insisted his intentions in setting up the council were sympathetic to Christianity. If we take a correlation between President Trump and how the emperor of Rome, Constantine, how they talk about Christianity, to pull them in, isn't that remarkable? You see, Constantine used all the dirty tricks to keep the Roman pontiff away. However, at Nicaea, Constantine used a dirty trick to keep the Roman pontiff away, and due to his absence, Constantine proclaimed Jesus to be God separated, separate from the Father by sharing substance with God the Father and being very God himself. It was a, it was a little thing. It was a minority view at odds with Jesus' words that the Father is the only true God. John 17, verse 3. Do we see the little lies and the little twists? Don't they remind us of what Satan did with Adam and Eve? Psst, psst, it's just a little thing. Predictably, the Roman Pope Sylvester never signed Nicaea's articles, despite a 10-year opportunity to do so before he died. Now, in Constantine's conception, Jesus was being exalted further to be identical to the god Sol Invictus. Constantine believed in his deity Sol Invictus, who was a god himself and a son of the god of Horus, a father god of paganism. Constantine could now worship Sol Invictus under the name of Jesus. Now, does that ring a bell, folks? By exalting Jesus to the same nature as Saul Invictus, Constantine knew no one would find fault with paganism, gift wrapped in Christianity. Do you now understand why you are called a Christian? Because you have to make sure that something was wrapped into the garbage. Oh, you were supposed to throw that out. They didn't send you the memo. So paganism became Christianity. There is no doubt this is a spot on what Jesus meant to Constantine, Sol Invictus. To carry this pagan connection to an end, Jesus' nature, the Christology of Jesus, had to be altered by exalting it to fit Sol Invictus in every way. Constantine portrayed Jesus in an idolatrous manner, idolatrous manner, which Tertullian warned about in 200 AD. Tertullian was one of the brothers in charge at the time of the church. That was 200 AD. That was about 135 years later when this happened. So laying the foundation, folks, what did we learn from history? We had first the people that went over to the Americas, the new country, 400 years ago. And now we're going back to 325. It is 2020, so we are looking at 1900 years ago. The Bible tells us more truth than most people realize. Satan creates great deceptions by merely twisting 
scripture. A little here and a little there. Many people bring the preconceived beliefs with them when studying scriptures. They too often grab hold of the verses that can be taken out of context to support their preconceived beliefs and ignore the verses that do not fit. If we can approach scripture with an open mind and seek guidance and understanding continually through the Spirit of God, you will see the truth revealed at the proper time. Now, if you're following the Desert University like I did, you do not need a master's degree to understand scriptures. You should seek guidance and understanding from anyone. You don't need to seek guidance and understanding from anyone, such as a pastor or a friend or a family or anybody else. In other words, you don't even need me. For the Spirit of God is the key to understanding and knowing all truths of Scripture. Some of the smartest people ever lived knew little to nothing about spiritual matters. There is much disagreement upon among all the experts of biblical scholars for satan wants you to feel that the truth cannot be known since there is not a consensus but it is ridiculous you don't need a consensus we do not seek an agreement of the majority for it is not a barometer for truth many characters were scoffed by the majority but that should not discourage you from having a conviction in the things that you know to be true. So let's form a solid foundation. We started with this journey 400 years ago. We had the people that came to the new country, the United States of America, gradually formed itself. And people learned certain things, what to do and what not to do. And now we have the same situation. We went back 1900 years ago to the start of Christianity, 325 AD. Well, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Son of God, who dealt and restored justice, and that's why we call it restorative justice, simplified. So, a recap, it was Yeshua who did the work. He went on the cross, but it is a pagan Folks, oh Lord, it is a pagan who makes it Christianity. And now all the Christians are praying in the name of God, in a false God, because Satan twisted. And so the solid foundation that we found, that we thought we had, is called paganism. And it came from the ancient Babylon and spread throughout the earth. That is how we learn how paganism infiltrated Christianity itself. They were called the followers of the way, the truth, and the light. They were never Christians, but in order to make them sound so much nicer, they sound like Jesus Christ, Jesus, Jesus. In the fourth century, Constantine was the emperor of Rome. He often converted from a pagan sun worshipper of Mithraism to Christianity and made Christianity the state religion of Rome. So we have an emperor who says, I kill you if you don't do this. And I shared with some of you folks, and maybe you're not familiar with it. The reason why I started those videos is after 18 years in court, 12 years without lawyers, spending millions of dollars and losing billions in collateral. Everything was taken away from me because I refused to share with the Freemasons. Um, product and, and project that I had that I preferred to share with normal people, simple people. And they were going to take revenge and they broke me and I ended up in maximum security. Six years times three. And having served three years, we won another appeal. And by the grace of God, my wife and I both could leave. But when I say leave, we left Canada while our kids are still in Canada. And I tell you, all that disastrous experience made me think and rethink why do I believe what I believe and I came to the conclusion that if there are so many lies and I call it PMS the what does the PMS stand for when we look at it from God's side it is God created us physical 
He gave us a mental ability. We could talk, we could communicate with God and also with the snake, unfortunately, at that time. But we were kicked out of paradise. Why? Because the spiritual part was not yet developed. And that is what we are here for on this earth. We are learning and develop the spiritual aspect. But what did Satan come up with, with his PMS, is politics. He manipulates people through politics, as we have seen in the United States with the elections from Trump. Trump is prepared to go to the most, to totally destroy America if he doesn't get what he wants. Folks, money. <laughs> I can share with you so much. I used to work on Wall Street, and I tell you, that was in the mid-90s, late 90s. Awesome. Wonderful experience. But if you truly understand what money does, who controls the money, you understand that Satan manipulates you through money. And he asks for spirituality. I was three times excommunicated. Excommunicated. That means we were not worthy. I was not worthy. Roman Catholicism. My mom died and when I was six years of age and she could not be buried in holy ground. That started me thinking. Then when we moved on and I moved on, I basically we went for seven years to an orphanage. My father remarried. And when I came home, I didn't fit the bill of a family anymore. So shortly thereafter, I went to a seminary of the Seventh-day Adventist. And when I asked the questions, I got a letter and it stated, why are you asking those questions? And when I insisted, I was excommunicated. And then with the Pentecostals, I was a youth leader, very involved in the development of young people and educated them and helped them grow. Many of them are pastors now. Some of them have big churches, 30,000 people plus, others maybe a couple of hundred people. But the point is, I got excommunicated. Why? Because I asked why, what happened? And all those points, together with what happened with us in Canada, eight years in court, 12 without lawyers, I was forced to learn to think like a lawyer. And all of a sudden, I can understand Paul. Paul was a lawyer at his time. And once you get to understand the law, the way God sees it, all of a sudden you start looking at evidence that was in the beginning. What was the evidence? So Midas was a god of the pagans, which was the sun god. So pagans got to keep their traditions, some slightly called different, while the Christians kept many of their names and terminology, terminology like Jesus. Paganism got dressed up in Christian clothing. It was a compromise by both parties that allowed Constantine to grow his empire and acquire more power. He couldn't care less about Jesus or God as long as he got to do what he wanted, just like Trump. It was the beginning of the great falling away spoken of in the scriptures. Instead of the followers of the way, they became known as Christians, not remaining separate and holy from the world. It joined the world in its customs and practices in the worship of their God. In 325, Constantine convened the Council of Nicaea, and he basically made sure that the Pope at that time got all the power on paper, but he never ratified it. So, reality was, Constantine conceived what Christianity was, a powerful force, and he needed that. The more persecution it endured, the stronger it became. Christianity also threatened the so-called divine right of the king. So pagan beliefs affirmed that the king's righteous and religious right by worshipping the king. Uh-oh. So what are we talking about here now? The king, the emperor of Rome, got worshipped as a god as well. Because now we have Jesus Christ, the son of God. Oh, wait a minute. So he is praying to the Son, not the Son of God, to the Son, S-U-N. Constantine combined church and state, and he was the head of the new church. The Roman Empire became the Holy Roman Empire. The church had no competitors. 
until the Protestant Reformism, Reformation in 1517. If you opposed the church, you were not an other denomination. You were an heretic and considered a Christian. Sorry, and not considered a Christian. Folks, what do we learn from history? And when we go and check the Bible, when we pray, ask God to reveal, ask God to reveal the truth. He said, seek you first the kingdom of God and all those other things shall be given unto you. Tough times never last. With tough people, they do. God bless you. Bye for now.
Thank you.